All right, let's go to Lisa in Missoula. What's up, Lisa? Hi. What's happening? Hi, not much. Good morning. Good morning to you. Is the world uh, <laughs> spinning in your area? Um. Yeah, it seems to be. Seems to be good over here. Why do y'all keep letting all those balloons go over there? What are you doing? <laughs> I played no part in any of it. <laughs> sure, sure, Lisa. We're on to you. Hey, uh, before you continue oh, yeah. your Hold question with Lisa, yeah. I, you don't see this, and I want to make sure that y'all have this discussion. On Lisa's email, she signed off as Proud Dog Mom and continue. Oh, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> and that was on purpose, and I'm sorry. <laughs> hey, listen, we all need to live in our own little delusions, and if this is the one for you, then so be it. And thank you, you for— know, he- he looks really cute in a sweater. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> uh, uh, Kelly just carries like a small vial of gas in her purse. And so when she sees any small flame, she's like, ooh. And then she just dumps gasoline on it just to watch things burn. So <laughs> I hey, love listen, it. I love her for it. Are you calling about being a dog mom? Please say yes. No, no. Because that he's makes great. you crazy. Okay, so uh, what do you want to talk about? What's up? Yeah, well, um, at the end of the day, the question is, and just um, in acknowledging how anxiety changes, mm-hmm. I'm I'm wanting some really practical tips on on how I can get this under control. And then um, secondary to uh, that, because I, I emailed in and my question kind of changed after we had scheduled this, but um, learning to trust my spouse, how to relearn how to trust him when I feel like with all this anxiety, I can't even trust myself anymore. What do you do? Um, well, there's a backstory and I prepped some notes. Okay. Go um, for it. I'll run through it quickly. Okay. So, um, backstory, depending on how I interpret the the questions, I'm a seven to an eight on the ACES exam. Mm. Um, I, I hear that. I see that, but I also acknowledge that I turned it around. I did the work. Um, life is good. Um, I'm living the quote end quote middle class American dream. I have a great dog, uh, great job, great house. Right. Um, I I've, I've always struggled with anxiety. Um, I, well, I say always, I, I didn't know I was struggling with anxiety until maybe three years ago. Okay. Can I pause um, you? Can I pause changing. you right here? Can I pause you right here? Yeah. Yeah. If you were with me right now, I would say, ask you if I had permission to give you a hug. And what I would do is not in a weird, creepy way, um, but I would want to give you a hug for like 15 or 20 seconds past where it got awkward to where your shoulders would finally drop for a second. You just, you just rattled off a really common response to childhood trauma, which is I will outachieve this thing. I'll outrun it with my house size square footage and I'll outrun it with my salary. I'll outrun it with my, how good looking my husband is. I'll outrun it with the car that I drive. And it will catch you and it will bury you, right? Yeah, it feels right. <laughs> and I think that's exactly what's happened. <laughs> well, you said, here's, here's the big tell for me is your anxiety keeps moving on you. Yeah. And it's, it, it's, some people have a phobia about a particular room in their house because that's where their child passed away. Like they can't go in that room. Their body is identified. They put a GPS pin in that room. This room's not safe. That's not what your body's doing. Your body has identified the world is unsafe. And as soon as you get a grasp on something, because you're so strong, you're outrunning a seven or eight on the aces. You're so strong. You're able to grab hold of these things and wrestle it to the ground. And then kind of like a like a balloon animal, it squirts out somewhere else and something else, it jumps on something else. And, and, and it's because you're not healing from the center. And I'm going to even push you further and say, I've come to believe with all of the reviews of the literature and all of the swan diving into all the neurochemicals and all that, all the stuff that only a few of us nerds really care about. At the end of the day, healing from anxiety, teaching your body that you're safe is about connection and a relationship. And traumatized people, that's the demon of trauma is it makes relationships the, 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 the monster. And so your body identifies yeah. relationships as something I can't get into. And if you don't have relationships, you can't breathe. Yeah. 
And so then it makes everything it spins your alarms and says, we can't breathe, we can't breathe. And you're, you're like, oh, I'm going to reach out to my husband because I love him. And then your body's like, no. And then like a good husband, he goes and does something stupid or a whole <laughs> bunch of things stupid or in a yeah. weird, gross dance, he's starved for connection too. And he's got a woman that he loves who's sleeping next to him and he can feel the nuclear reactor in her chest. And he starts to think, well, maybe it's me. And then somebody somewhere lights him up it makes him feel a little bit more alive. Am I onto something? Tell me I'm right or wrong. You're heading in the right direction, but I got a hard left turn for you. Okay, bring it. <laughs> yeah, so I've, I've been with my husband for five years total, two and a half of those married. Okay. Um, intimacy at the beginning was really great. Of course. Um, it did taper off pretty early. Um, and why? Um, why? I, why, 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 <laughs> Well, Well, I'll, I'll get to there because I think I finally figured it out. Okay. <laughs> Um, it, it's been a, an issue ongoing, um, a lot of fights and I've been unfortunately growing some resentment about it. Mm -hmm. Um, while we were still dating, he had a bit of a, a, te a text affair, if you will, an emotional affair, um, that I, I was able to heal from and forgive him and, and we moved on. A, a bit of one? <clears throat> uh, it was, yeah, it was a whole thing. Um, okay. So yeah. you're speaking trauma language. I'm gonna call it out every time I hear it. Okay, he didn't okay. have a bit of an affair. He yeah. cheated on you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And yep. you are great at peacekeeping and you are great at minimizing. Yep. Okay. Yep. <laughs> yep. No, thank you. All right. Um, and then, so you went through with marriage, I, you forgave him, you said, yep. we're going to, we're going to make this, make a run at this thing. And then. Yep. And then a week ago today, I uncovered a secondary flirtation, uh, an affair um, that he swears up and down was short lived nothing physical happened and um during this confrontation he then proceeded to admit to me that for the entirety that i have known him and for as long as he can remember he's had a porn addiction um and he works on the road and um you know he's gone three nights a week and he's been struggling with that and i'm just I, I feel like maybe that's why intimacy is failing, but he's also been lying to me the entire time I've known him. And I'm, I don't even know how to like close my dialogue for the backstory because I just, I'm, I'm at such a loss. I don't, I don't, I'm bamboozled. Yeah. Um, yeah. So there's no surprise that you're anxious because your body's been trying to get your attention for a long time. That it, that it sensed yeah. something was not right at home. And on top of as much trauma as you've experienced, you learned at an early age, you need to take those feelings and bury them in the backyard because they just get you hurt. We've got things to solve. We've got things to achieve. We've got things to crush and kill and drag home. We don't have time for this digging into what's making me feel uncomfortable. Right? And so good yeah. for you. You learned how to move on, right? And not good for you. Once again, the person who's at the bottom is you. Here's what's so disorienting, man, and it breaks my heart for you. You've built your entire identity on top of this trauma, not from a place of healing, but from a place of accomplishment and achievement, and I can do all things. Lisa will take control, and I can't control this. And so yeah. now you've lost trust in Lisa. How did I miss this? Yep. I've been prepped for this. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Can I just tell you I'm sorry? Thanks. <laughs> How did your conversation end? Um, well, and that's where it gets weird again. Um, it's been going fine now. I've I've listened to a lot of your show, um, probably almost every episode, and I, I re listen to the ones I need to hear again and I read and I do the things and I know I either have to be all in or all out. And I do really love this guy. And so I've, I've chosen to be all in. Um, and I, it's, it seems good now and I, but it's not, and I can't just, let me, I can't keep pretending. Let and, me tell you where I failed you. Okay. Um, yeah. I should add, I should add a caveat. You got to be all in or you got to be all out. But sometimes when the wound is deep, when the wound hurts, when there's been years of systemic lying and covering up and multiple affairs, sometimes I can't be all in right now. And I should have added that a long, a long time ago, and I'm sorry. 
for the first time in your life, you've got to find a place where you feel safe enough to say what you actually think and what you're actually feeling. I'm pissed. You should be. Sorry. Say it. <laughs> say it. Yeah. Car Ramrod, say it. <laughs> I am so freaking pissed. Say yeah. it. Keep going. I want to punch him in the face. I mean, <laughs> that's not a, that's not a solution, but I do. I mean, I pro- I I'm considering it. Keep going. <laughs> I just I, there's got to be something better out there, right? There not something, but like better energy better existence and like why why what was so wrong with me that this had to happen again there it is and listen to me very very carefully your husband's dealing with demons that have nothing to do with you and it would actually in your mind be easier if this was about you because then you could have something to fix Your husband's lying to you because something's wrong with him. Your husband's cheating on you because he's wrestling with his own issues. And maybe I just, just for full honesty and it may be that he has been with you and he can't figure out a way to connect with you. Okay. That in my estimation, that doesn't give license for what's happening, but it might provide a context. Okay. It's not an excuse, but it might say like, I'm trying and it didn't work out. And instead of having the courage to say, this isn't a good relationship for me, he went ahead and married you. And instead of being honest with you and saying, hey, I want to work through this thing together, he lied to you. And instead of saying, I feel, I don't like who I'm becoming in this relationship, he went and found somebody else that says, well, I like you. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. This isn't you. So then what do I do? Set that thing down. You tell me. I don't know. That's, that's why I called you. <laughs> <laughs> do you I don't be, know. I'm at a loss. I, do you want to be married to him? Yeah, he's dumb, but I really like him. That's not dumb. Don't apologize for that. Right. Um, do you need a break? Well, and that's the confusing part is I want nothing more but to be around him right now. Is that reality or is that your trauma? I have no idea. That's that's confusing. I I I don't know. Do you have sexual abuse in your past? None that I can remember. Okay. Well, and I was listening to one of your shows and I um started dating, quote unquote, at fourteen and my first boyfriend was eighteen and according to you that's not healthy. <laughs> So maybe. <laughs> probably, probably, probably not great. Probably not great. Um, probably not great. Um, did somebody leave when you were a kid? Yeah. So we talk a lot about. <laughs> and I don't, yeah, exactly. I don't know who, if I've mentioned it on this show, oh, surely I have. We all know about the fight or flight response. And we all know about fight or flight or freeze mm-hmm. response. A fourth yeah. uncommon one that we don't talk about a lot is fawn fight, flight, or freeze, or fawn, where I'm going to nuzzle up and become extra lovable to the person who's hurting me because maybe that'll keep them from hurting me again. And I'm asking yeah. you, is that what you're doing? Are you so terrified in your at, at the cellular level that he's going to leave if you take a break? That you can't imagine a world where somebody else leaves and so you're going to continue to get cheated on continue to get lied to. You're going to continue to wade into his storms because the alternative is you might end up by yourself and it's not, I can't do that again. Possibly. Possibly. I don't want you to be mad at yourself for loving him. You're not, there's nothing wrong with you. You're not broken. It's your husband. And I don't want you to, like, man, anybody's like, oh, you should just leave him. And shut up. Nobody, you only person who can answer that question is you. But I want to be honest about, um, sometimes you got to, you got to take a break from a sparring session because you're hurt. Yeah. Um, 
What does uh, regaining trust look like for you? Like if you snapped your fingers and said, this is how I'm going to start trusting this guy again, what would that look like? Where I don't ask him every morning um, if he looked at anything overnight or question him when he interacts with women at work. That's going to be a long, long time. Yeah. And I'll tell you right now, I want you to keep asking that question because you're going to be tempted to stop asking that question because you don't want to make him feel uncomfortable anymore. You don't want to hassle him or nag him. And you're going to take your feelings once again and shove them so far down that your body can't breathe. The difference here is I want you to call it out. I'm going to ask you every single day for the next three months. Then yeah. we'll, re- we'll revisit it. But, but you, the asking's one part. What if he just lies because he's been doing it for so long? That's where I was about to say you have to have the yeah. if-then statement. If you lie to me again, I'm out. Yeah. Yeah. If you text another woman that you're not married to that's not me, I'm out. Yeah. I don't personally, I don't believe him that he hasn't been with somebody. Yeah. And that's just my default setting. In that kind of situation, multiple times over multiple years, especially knowing I've got a wife who's particularly sensitive to this particular issue, um, you got to prove to me otherwise. I'm just going with, if it's if it you know smells like a fire, it's probably fire. Yeah. What else yeah. does he not tell you the truth about? And don't say nothing because I won't believe you. I have, I've been questioning that same thing. I, I, I mean, when he tells me he loves me or he likes me or he is sexually attracted to me, it all feels like lies now. Yeah, I, and that's I, a weird thing. There's some really remarkable research and writing. Um, probably the most eloquent writer on this is Esther Perel. Um, and what got her da- down the rabbit hole that she ended up becoming like one of the most important voices in the world on was she kept meeting with clients who had really extraordinary marriages and then someone would go cheat and it wasn't about sexual attraction and it wasn't about financial attraction and it wasn't about, they didn't have the same values and they had just helped somebody's, they just sat together while one of their parents had died of cancer. Like they'd been through hell and back together. They were a good marriage. And ultimately that's where I take that. That's she's the one who gave me that idea that I think is so profound. And I continue to see it over and over and over again once she illuminated it, which is most of the time people cheat Most of the time, people go seeking stimulation somewhere else from somebody else, whether it's texting, whether it's um, somebody's OnlyFans site, whether it's pornography, whether it's actually meeting somebody and creating a new relationship, whether it's just a one-night hookup. It's because they don't like who they've become in their relationship. Yeah. And so I think the challenge here might be you deciding, this is who I want to be married to. And giving him a sense of, these are the values. This is the person that I want to be married to. Somebody who's got enough courage to go deal with this crap with a counselor. Somebody who goes and to a Celebrate Recovery group or somebody who meets with a group of men every week to hold each other accountable. Somebody who goes nine months in our house with no internet. Someone who doesn't have a cell phone. Whatever that looks like. Yeah. And I want you to stop apologizing for wanting some thresholds of trust in your marriage and in your home because you're not the one that took them out. I just feel like maybe I'm overreacting. You're not. Maybe it was just you're not. the text thing. and Even if it was, that's the trauma talking. Yeah. But... <laughs> I struggle to even acknowledge like what happened as a kid as being trauma, right? Like it just, it happened and it was so out of my control, like That's fine. whatever, moving and, on. And listen, and we do, I, I've done a terrible job also on my show over the course talking about post-traumatic growth. People become incredibly strong and incredibly connected and become incredible leaders and have incredible families following trauma. Post-traumatic yeah. growth is a very, very real thing. So I don't want to minimize it. You're not broken forever. I got yeah. to look at the epidemiological data, right? You're more likely to have X yeah. and Y and Z growing up. That's just a fact. That just is. And 
When I look around my community, most everybody I see experienced some pretty hard stuff growing up on a big scale or on a little scale. And man, there's some pretty amazing people who've come from some pretty amazing places. And I count you as one of them. I would love to see you talk to a counselor not to even heal from childhood trauma. I'd love to see you meet with a counselor to begin to listen to Lisa's voice for the first time in your whole life. Would you do that? Yeah, yeah. To learn how to yeah. create boundaries and not apologize for them? Yeah. I want you to yeah. pick up um, Nidra Taweb, T-A-W-E-B. Her book is called Find Boundaries, Find Peace, I think is the title. Um, I just read it recently. It is outstanding. Outstanding. Uh, but I think it's a book worthy of you reading it, okay? Okay. I also want you to hang on the line. I'm going to send you a copy of Own Your Past, Change Your Future. And um, just as my gift to you, and I want you to read that as well. But I want you to, to, before the day is over, I want you to call a counselor, not because something's wrong with you, but because you got some new skills to learn. And the new skills to learn are trusting Lisa's body for the first time ever. Learning to identify when your body's telling you you're not safe or you're disconnected, which it's been trying to get your attention for a long time. That's anxiety. And three, how to practice and set and implement boundaries and then hold them in your new marriage. Because your marriage is new now. What was is over. Now you and your husband get to build something completely new. And y'all got to figure out what that's going to look like. He needs to go see somebody too. Because he's struggling with feeling dead inside. And that's not on you. That's on him. He's going to have to do that work to decide why he keeps self-sabotaging and why he's become so unhappy with himself in his role as your husband. That's his journey to do. And y'all probably end up in marriage counseling, which would be fantastic. But you're right to be upset and you're right to be heartbroken and you're you're right to want to start swinging. All those feelings are right. You just got that scary, scary, terrifying question. What am I going to do now? And I'll walk with you every step of the way. And I'm happy to talk to him too if he wants to give me a shout. Thanks for your bravery.